Hey there, this is Dan Kirkbride. I'm the Instructional Technology Specialist for the Coeur d'Alene School District. And today we're going to be going over creating quick assessments using Google Forms. Now this doesn't always have to be a, an assessment or a quiz, but it could also be used to gather information from students or even from uh, student families or anything like that. We could gather uh, email addresses, get links, uh, anything like that, any kind of information that we want to gather from any group of respondents. So to get started, we're going to go to our Google Drive and we're going to click the New button in the new uh, Google Drive interface. If you're using the old Google Drive interface, you'll see a Create button there instead of this new button. It does the same thing, just uh, the updated look. When I click that, I'm going to go down here to More and I'm going to select Google Forms. It'll be the same path whether you're on the new or the old interface. When I select Google Forms, it's going to create a brand new form for me. The first thing I'm going to want to do is up here in the top right, click where it says Untitled Form. I'm going to give it a title and click OK. And the first thing I want to point out is that the title that I gave this form document is the same title that it's going to put at the top of the form for when our respondents see it. Now I can go in here and change this if I want to. So I might want to call it quiz number one. In the form description here, we can add anything that we want to tell our respondents. Any sort of directions or uh, notes that they need to know about. If we want to give them any links, this is a good place to do that. If there's some reference links that are outside of the form that you would like them to have access to, you can add those in here. Just uh, putting the entire URL and Google Forms will create that into a link for you. Now that, <clears throat> excuse me, now that I have, now that I have my form and I've got it titled and I've put a description, we can, now that I've got the form titled, I might want to collaborate with somebody else on this form. And in normal cases on a Google Drive document, up in the top right hand corner, there's usually a share button. When well, Google Forms, they change this a little bit. In the file menu, they've added that option. I can add collaborators. Using the same interface that I do with other Google Documents, I'll find the person I want to collaborate with. And in a Google Form, the only option here is can edit. If you want them to view the form and see it as view only, you would just send them to the live form. The other thing we can do is we can add themes to our forms. And up here at the top, we've got this change theme button. It starts out by giving us a preview of what our form would look like. If I sent this out to my respondents right now, this is what they would see. If I'd like to change it up, make it look a little bit different, I can select from their already created themes. I think I'll go with the beach for this one. Once I've selected that, I can also, there's some customizing options. I can go in and change many different aspects of the form, including the font type that they use, the size for the titles, for the description, and all the different parts of the form. I'm going to leave this as the stock theme and to get back to editing my questions I'll just click over here where it says edit questions and now I need to start thinking about what what information I want to collect from my students probably the first thing I'm going to want to do is get their name so I'll think just like if I were to hand this out to my students what are the pieces of information that I'm going to need to know for this type of a question I want it to be a text so that they can input their name and as soon as I click done it shows me a little bit of a preview of what that question is going to look like and then I can go down here and add another item. We'll notice that the default here 
as it's starting to build its multiple choice. And I may want to collect something else in the text, maybe the period or the date. And at some point if I decide as I'm building this question that the question type I chose is not really the one that I want, I can always go in here and change it to a different one. And instead of clicking where it says add item, if I click that little down arrow right next to it, I can choose different types of questions for which they have five basic types of questions. There's four advanced and then there's some layout options that we can add in there as well. So we already saw the text. A paragraph text is going to be just a bigger text box. In your regular text one, like up here for the name, there's a limit to the number of characters that they can type in there. So if I wanted students to complete a full sentence or a full paragraph, this one might not give them enough room. So I might use this paragraph text because that will give them a longer number of, or a bigger number of characters, longer text that they can enter in. And when they actually see that, they'll see a bigger text box than what we see here. But I can continue adding items. We can add a multiple choice item. Down in here in the options, I can enter all of my options one by one. If I have these listed in a spreadsheet, I can also copy and paste them in here and it will separate anything that's separated in the cell in the spreadsheet will be separated in these different options when I paste it into this question type. So we'll see that the multiple choice questions show up as, as little radio buttons and students will be able to select from those buttons. We also have check boxes. In the check boxes, you'll notice at first the biggest difference is that it's a square the students will check instead of a circle. But the other major difference between the check boxes and the multiple choice is with multiple choice, students can only select one option versus the check boxes where more than one can be selected at the same time. We also have choose from a list, which is very similar to our multiple choice, but it will give a drop down list for them to choose their answer instead of listing all the options out on the page. So in many cases it's a matter of deciding how we want those questions to look. We also have scale questions so if we want our students to do like a survey or something like that we can have them choose the radio buttons on the scale. There's also a grid which will create a sort of a multi-tiered type of question. And as soon as I've given the, a question, I've given my rows and my columns their titles, I can click Done, and this is what my students will see. Here's the row titles, the column titles, and when they go in they'll select one for each row. There's also the date, which we used up above, and there's also a time option where I can collect a certain time. And there's some layout options. There's section headers. Page breaks are useful if you have a lot of questions and you want your questions to be on different pages. Section headers are good if you've got a moderate amount of questions and you want to separate them into different sections. Maybe it's different topics within the same quiz, something like that. You can also add images. So if you want to have an image for students to look at as they're answering a question, you can insert that. And you can pull images from your computer. You can take a snapshot from your uh, computer's camera if it's so equipped. You can take the URL. So if you know the address of uh, an image that you want to insert, you can grab the web address and insert it there. If you have albums in your Google Drive, you can pull those from your albums 
if the images are sitting in your Google Drive, you can grab it from there, or you can even do a Google search right here from the insert menu. The last thing that you can put in there is videos, and Google does limit this to only YouTube videos. So if you want to search for a YouTube video, you can go straight here to a YouTube search. Or if you know the URL, you already know what the, where the video is on YouTube, you can copy and paste the web address right here. It'll, uh, you'll see a video preview, and it'll insert that video right on your form for you. So those are the basic types. And as we set these up, we can add these in here. The other nice thing about them is they're not static once we put them in there. We can move them around. So for example, maybe I want this time one to be up with the date and the name. So I'll just take it and drag it up there and drop it where I want it to go. I can move these around so that they're in the exact order that I want them to be. And then I'm done. When I want to take a look and see what my form looks like, I can go up here right at the top in the middle where it says view live form. And this is exactly what my respondents will see when they open the form to take a look at it. So we see that we've got a regular text question here, the time, the date, a paragraph box. So this is slightly different from the, par the regular text box that you can get. This is the paragraph text. And it is expandable. So down here in the right uh, bottom right corner, they can expand that to make more room so they can see all of their typing if they end up putting something really big in there. We've got our checkbox, we've got our multiple choice, and like I said earlier with multiple choice, we can only choose one of those options. That radio button will move around until I decide on, hey, option two is what I want. This checkbox, I can choose more than one. On the scale, like the multiple choice, I can only choose one option. Drop down list, I can only choose one thing there. And on this grid question, I can choose one for each row. If I change that, the radio button for that row will move around as well. When I'm all the way done, then I'll click Submit. Now there's a couple of things that we can set on our form. So up at the top here, we've got our master form settings. It's our administrative settings for the form. We can require anyone who's responding to the form to have to sign in to their Coeur d'Alene School District Google account first. And doing that is nice, especially if you want to limit who gets to go in and respond to your form. If you're doing a quiz or something like that, it's probably a good idea to have your students log in and that limits who else is able to access that form. So somebody, they couldn't share it with somebody outside the district and have them go in and complete it for them or something like that. You can have it automatically collect their username. This is nice, especially if you're using this for a quiz so that you can verify that the name that they put in question one here is truly who was signed in at that time. So we can have it collect their username. If we have multiple pages, we can have it show the progress with a progress bar. It'll show what percentage of the questions they've completed or the entire form. If we have them log in, we can also make it so that they can only respond once to the form. And then finally, we can shuffle the question order if we want to. Down here at the bottom, we have some adjustments that we can make to the confirmation page. So if I quickly go back over here, this is that confirmation page. I can change what it says here. I can change whether or not they can sub this link shows up for them to submit another response. And that's all in these settings down here at the bottom. So if I uncheck that, show link to submit another response, the next time somebody goes in and responds to this, that link will no longer be there. I can have it uh, show a link to the form results. If I want students to, once they're done answering the quiz, if they want to go and see how their answer is compared to everyone else's, I could put that there. And I could also allow them to edit their responses after submitting. Probably wouldn't want to do both of those to where they could see what everybody else answered and then go and change their answers. So most of the time I don't ever 
use these two options when I'm using this for a quiz, but if it's a survey and I want to show everyone after they've completed it what everybody else said, this could be a good way to do that. So now we've got to think about how we're going to send this out to our students or our respondents so that they can complete the survey and I can start collecting results. So there's one of a couple ways that we can do this. The first one is right here where it says view live form. When I open that up, I see that quiz. And this web address right here at the top in the, the URL in the address bar is the direct link to this form. So I could copy this link right here and give that to my students. I could post it on my website or put it in Google Classroom as a link and they would have access to that. I can also go back here to the form editing page and up in the top right hand corner where it says send form I can click that button and right at the top there is the link to share. That link is the same exact link that I would find up here. The nice thing about doing it over here in the send form menu is that I can click this option here and it will shorten that link for me where I can not have such a long unmanageable link. If I want to paste this link in on my website it'll look a lot tidier. If I know that I'm going to have somebody trying to type the link in as I'm handing it to them, I'll use this option as well. Keeping in mind that with these, the sequence of letters and numbers at the end after that last slash, they will be case sensitive. So for example, if I gave this to somebody and they put a capital H instead of a lowercase, or if they put a lowercase s instead of the capital, it will direct them to the wrong place. Um, they might get error messages or they might get a totally different form. So we'll want to make sure that our respondents know that if they have to retype that in, that those are case sensitive. And finally, the last way that I can share this form is I can embed it into a web page. So if I know a little bit of HTML, I can click that embed, get this HTML code, copy it, paste it into my website, and it will actually take that form and you, you'll be able to see that form on that web page. It won't be a link, it'll be the actual form right on the page. They can complete it right from that page and submit it without having to navigate away to a separate web page for that form. And then I could also just send it via a quick email if I've got my students' emails or my parents' emails, if that's what I'm, if I'm sending it to parents. If I've got the group email that I'm sending this to, I can just send it as an email put a quick custom message, maybe I say, please complete this survey or please complete this quiz during class time or something like that. So those are all the different ways that I can share this form. The other thing that I can do which is really nice with the form is I can choose whether or not the form is active. So under responses in the menu bar at the top, where it says accepting responses is sort of a status message here. I can click that and that will actually turn the form off. It will tell me it's been turned off. If any of my, like for example, if I go over here and refresh, it'll tell me, hey, this form is off. It's no longer accepting responses. Then I can go back here and I see that that status message has changed. I can click that again and now it's starting to collect responses. If I go back over here, refresh that page and now it's back to a form that can be filled out. So now that I've created my form, I've previewed it, I've sent it out, I'm starting to collect responses, now I need to know well where are those responses going? How can I view the results of this quiz or survey? So the easiest way to get there is right at the top in the middle there's a button that says view responses. When I click that, that'll open up the spreadsheet where my responses are going. So we can see already the, res the one response that I submitted has already been recorded. And as more responses come, it'll fill in more rows in the spreadsheet. Sometimes this is enough information that as the organizer of this survey or this quiz, this is enough information for me to go off of. I can look at each responder, look at what they said, 
and either assign a grade or just know that this is what they posted on my survey. Another tool that it's available for us, if we go up here into the menu bar where it says form, is a summary of responses. So if I click show summary of responses, it's going to show a quick summary of all the responses that have been entered in. So for our text ones, they're going to come across as text. For the long paragraph text, it's going to show the entire thing for all of the respondents. You'll see as you get more people responding, this will get bigger and bigger. But for our multiple choice and list and check boxes, we get these nice graphs. So like for a checkbox question, we get a bar graph showing how many times somebody chose each one of those options. For a multiple choice question, we'll get a nice pie chart. For a scale, another we'll get a vertical bar graph. And this list question, get the same kind of results that we got from the multiple choice question. And then for our grid question, we'll get it separated into each row. will show us what each respondent selected. And then a, just an average number of responses daily. So this is a good way to, especially if you're doing this for like a quick formative assessment, to take a quick look at each question and say, how many of my students got this one right? How many got this one right or wrong? And then you can turn around and design your next day of instruction based on the responses that you got in this summary. So now if I would like to change where those responses go, because sometimes maybe I want them to all go to a different spreadsheet, if I'm back in the form editing screen, I can go up here to where it says responses, and I can change the destination. So if I take, select that, I might want to say, you know what, I want it as a new sheet, an, exi an existing spreadsheet. So maybe I'd like to collect all of my form responses in one spreadsheet as multiple tabs. So I'll select that item, I'll click Choose. It'll bring up my options. I'm going to go with Quiz 1 Responses. I'll hit Select, and we see up here that now it is setting up that spreadsheet. I can click View Responses. This is actually in that same spreadsheet that we had the other one, but what I've done is created a new tab. So Form Responses 2 is now where all of my form responses will go. This one here is still collects all of my old responses, but any of the new responses won't go in here. They'll all go here to Form Responses 2. And now as more and more responses come in, they'll all populate here. This is especially handy if I want to collect all of the quiz results over multiple classes or over uh, time. If I want to use different forms, let's say I had this form and then I created a different one for quiz number two and I've got a different one for quiz number three, I can send all of those responses to the same spreadsheet file and they'll all just be different tabs down here and I'll collect them over time for one unit or for a quarter or for any length of time that I choose. Or if I so desire, I can just leave it as separate spreadsheet files altogether so that each form has its own spreadsheet file. It's totally up to my own organizational style and how I feel it'll be easiest for me to look at those responses and do what I need to do with the data. So to follow up later, I'm going to do another tutorial on how you can take this information and using an add-on, you can have it automatically grade a quiz and have those grades sent back to the student uh, with different types of data depending on what kind of a quiz you're giving and what you want your students to know at the end of the quiz. So check back for more information. If you'd like more information about how to set up a form or you want me to come and help uh, get you set up and help you do this for your first time, just shoot me an email. My email is dkirkbride at cdaschools.org and I'm more than happy to come out and uh, lend a hand. Thanks.